All right, we're going to look at uh, what's inside of a uh, Gentech ECM 3.0. This particular one is for a half horsepower. It's uh, typically used in blower motors for air conditioners and uh, condenser motors, a more efficient unit. Here's the uh, connector. The top connector is um, the power going in. That's the 5 pin. Now on your left would be the uh, line 1, neutral, uh, ground, and then the 2 on the right are a jumper for selecting um, 120 volt input from line 1 to neutral. If you leave the jumper off, uh, you put in 240 volts from line 1 to neutral. And the 4-pin connector in the bottom is um, the data going in, or the control line. There's a common, RX, and then a TX, and then V. V is, uh, I believe in this case, 24 volts. And I'm not sure if the RX and the TX are, um, you know, separate receive and transmit, or if it's a differential signal going in and out. But uh, that's going to be hard to <laughs> hard to tell by just looking at it. You'd have to put a scope on there and look at it. I guess there's what the module looks like on the inside, with the most of the potting removed. And there's one screw right here that uh, holds this ground connection on. Right here, the screw is removed right now. And with that uh, screw removed, this whole module just lifts out. And there's a case with no module in it. Right there is a uh, thermally conductive pad that's uh, where the uh, power transistors rest up against that. And there it is. Um, trying to get a good focus on it. Here's a uh, a schematic of the power supply, and I can kind of point to things that are on here. These, uh, this is uh, neutral here, and then line one, and they go in, and right. Those two round, well, you can just see the tops of the round blue things are um, these capacitors right here for uh, line filtering. They go from line one and neutral to ground. And then it goes, there's a um, common mode capacitor right there, this one. And this is a common mode choke right here. And then another common mode capacitor right there. And then it goes into this bridge rectifier, which is on this heat sink. You see it right sitting there. And uh, then there are the two filter capacitors here. They're actually in series because each one of them is uh, rated at 200 volts and the power supply puts out uh, 340 volts DC. And you can see on the board there's spots for two more and uh, I believe those are used for the higher power motors, so you'd use this exact same circuit board, probably everything, and just add those two capacitors and it's be rated for the uh, three-quarter horsepower. This uh, round black thing right here is a um, temperature-dependent resistor. They also call them NTCs for negative temperature coefficient. And it starts out at um, about one ohm and it goes down as it heats up and that's um, where do they have that? It's actually right here it's in between the uh, line one and the uh, full wave bridge and what that does is it, it uh, limits the inrush current for charging these capacitors I don't think it's supposed to provide any protection other than that then, uh, what else is there? There's three capacitors here, these little rectangular ones, and they go, I didn't draw them in the schematic, they go from here, here, and not sure, but I think here, 
to ground and there's a, a little little tiny gas discharge tube right here which uh, takes a common on all three of these capacitors and it goes to this ground connection. Then once you have um, well, I guess I should mention what how this thing works is this is uh, when you put 240 volts in here, it goes through here just like a you know pretty standard um, power supply. You have a full wave bridge, and then you have uh, the 340 volts across here. And the reason you have 340 volts because that's the uh, the peak. Um, the voltage, the line voltage is rated in RMS, so when you convert it through this uh, diode bridge you typically end up with the peak voltage of the RMS coming in. This, when you put the jumper in here, it changes the circuit from a full wave um, bridge to a half wave voltage doubler. And so even when you're operating on a 200 or 120 volt, you still get the exact same voltage over here on this side. Um, because it doubles the uh, the voltage, but uh, you take a hit in as far as the filter capacitor isn't going to filter as well um, because you're having half wave coming in instead of full wave. And then starting on this side, this whole section here, including underneath this connector, this um, bottom connector, the data one actually connects directly to the circuit board right here. And you can see there's a little clear path that goes right around here. And that is, I believe, the electrical isolation. So on this side where the connector is, you have all your um, inputs to uh, optical isolators. And they go from this side to this side because the, um, the, the microprocessor is actually uh, operating on the line voltage. It's not isolated from the line. And so they do that because <laughs> they have to. <laughs> All right, here's the, uh, this is a um, uh, power supply regulator chip that takes um, the 200, or the uh, 340 volts and converts it to, uh, I believe it's 14 volts. There's a schematic for that. This is a generic schematic for use of that chip. And that's the uh, part number right there. And then uh, that is used, I believe it has to be reduced again because right here, kind of, I didn't uncover it completely, but really hard to see. But right here is a 32 pin um, IC that is the uh, microprocessor that controls the um, this module right here. And that microprocessor is this part number right here. At the and it's a 32 pin chip and it's programmable and I believe that's what they do is they flash the uh, whatever <coughs> personality you want into this ECM module um, through this connector. So some of these modules operate off of um, uh, a pulse width input, but this particular one actually has serial data going in and out of it. This is the, uh, this is what the um, microprocessor controls, and it's a, um, Right here is the part number. It's this I R A M S and 10 U P 60 A, and it's made by International Rectifiers. And here's a typical schematic for it. It has uh, this whole section here is that little black block that's right here. And this uh, microprocessor is external to that, and they show it right here. There's um, five volt uh, logic level lines going in here to control each one of these six transistors, and that comes directly out of that microprocessor. There's also a um, 
current sense resistor that is uh, fed back into the microprocessor to, I guess, to let you know, let the microprocessor know how much current the motor is drawing. And this thing takes uh, low voltage DC right here, which is, I believe, that 14 volt. So there must be another regulator in there somewhere that converts possibly the 14 volts to 5 volts to run this microprocessor. And uh, there's another IC in there right here. I don't know. There's probably more that I just didn't uncover. I don't know what that one does. I think it uh, it may be an op amp. It may have some sort of uh, thing for processing, uh, you know, voltages like measuring the current from the uh, that's going through here. There's one interesting thing. There's the uh, the resistor, the current shunt for measuring the current through the uh, return on these this IGBT array and Interestingly, this one failed because both these are shorted. So if you measure um, from the one side of this, where is it? Right here. Okay, that's uh, 340 volts coming in, and then um, over here is the the other side of the 340 volts DC. And if you measure from here across the 340 volts or at these at this two points of this uh, array you get uh, a short and then also if you measure this output you get a short so it's shorted from here to here to here and uh, but these are okay but it won't work with one but uh, interestingly enough the uh, they intentionally I don't know if it can show up in here right here there's a real small trace, and it's kind of a uh, copper colored now because what happened is all the uh, resist has burnt off of it. Um, the, you know, this blue colored paint that's on the board, and it's actually uh, melted away. And that's uh, kind of a fuse that's built into the, uh, the copper traces on the board. And you can tell it's a fuse because when it gets to right here, it um, the trace becomes about four times bigger and on the other side it does the same thing and then on both sides of this is a hole in the board to um, right here um, to electrically I guess to prevent the <laughs> the flame from spreading or something it's kind of unfortunate that they put this uh, the silicone on top of everything it doesn't you know, it's not, uh, there's not a lot of uh, reason for it other than that they don't want people repairing these things. The, uh, you know, it's probably actually bad because it's going to make everything run hotter because it's going to act like an insulator to all the ICs and components that are on the circuit board. You know, if they're worried about water, they can do like the military does and, and spray a uh, conformal coat, which is kind of a clear paint over everything. There's the back side of it. You can see this is the, uh, the rectifier here. And uh, over here is the uh, connections to the IGBT module. The IGBT module itself is all, this is all plastic here. So there's no, uh, you know, there's no problem with electrical isolation between the IGBTs and the, uh, the case. That's about it. Uh, it oddly, when I look up this part number, it says it's discontinued. So I don't know what they're using in the uh, this particular one. It has a date of uh, 2016. I don't know if they're still using old stock on the newer models or what's going on with that, or if they've come up with a replacement for it. So there you go.